We just made this fall porch post directional sign, but it's interchangeable, so it really could be any season. It could be Halloween, or we could go ahead and just and make it Christmas. And we'll show you how we made it right now. <laughs> what is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it, or make it? We do too, and we have a new video each week. This week, we're making a seasonal post directional sign. I know that sounds crazy, but we're taking one of these fence posts and we're gonna put some directional signs on it and we're gonna make them interchangeable for the season. So we're gonna start with a fall one and we're gonna add a Halloween and we're gonna add a Christmas version and I'm really excited about this project. I've been looking forward to it. Uh, we haven't yet tested yeah. whether or not it works 100%, so. Project's mainly theory. Surprise, we'll see, it. We'll, we'll find out together. But I, th I think it'll work and I'm, I'm really excited about it. Step one, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. <laughs> we needed well, we're making it interchangeable. So we needed seven fence pickets. This four by four post, fence post thing. It's only 48 inches tall. We needed some kind of base. So we had a scrap two by 12. And we picked up a little base trim for the post. Make it look all nice. This beefy magnet. This beefy magnets. You'll see, we hope. And some washers. Oh, and some paints. And some odds and ends and stuff. You know how it is. We'll continue our use of our country chic paints. So, oh, these are the big ones. Oh, yeah, I gotta hold We started ones. a bunch of little ones to test out the colors, but uh, of course, I went ahead and picked up a large white in crinoline. Crinoline. And a large black in licorice. licorice. <laughs> so, we'll be using those as well. Step two we're gonna make all of our cuts. We're really just cutting down the pickets, and they're 48 inches, so we're just going to cut them in half. So we have a couple of 24-inch planks, and I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to cut these with my pocket saw. <laughs> you, guys, you guys were missing my pocket saw, weren't you? I was missing my pocket saw. And Brad, we maybe we'll see Brad later. Have you seen Brad at all? I don't know. It's been a while since we've seen Brad. <laughs> Safety first. And to save on time, we'll be cutting two at a time. We use the other side of the pickets for the Halloween signs. And then for the Christmas signs, we cut one at eight, one at 12, one at 16, 20, and then one at 24. While we were at it, I cut some little feet. I just used a scrap piece of picket, cut them in squares. For one of the Halloween planks, I drew on it with a pencil and then cut it out with a jigsaw to make it look like the plank had been broken off. I used the Craig AccuCut and a circular saw to trim off a piece of spare 2x12 we had. <laughs> and I just made it square, so it's 11 and 1 8 by 11 and 1 8 But there's another alternative. so. These cuts were really simple. All we had to do was cut those pickets in half and your local home improvement store that will do that for you. Uh, and for the base, if you don't have the 2x12, we were thinking you could just as easily use one of these wood rounds that you get from Home Depot, Lowe's, any of your home yeah. improvement stores. This one's 18 inches. I think it'll work, but uh, I know you can get them as large as 24 inches. Garrett made some giant side at one point for with a 24 inch one. So I know that I that'll that have a, a wide base. Yeah, I think that base would be a little too big. But we did a video last year. I'll put it up over here, right over Kim's head. <laughs> where we made a porch post also. And we just took a one by 12, made two pieces and glued it together. And you couldn't even tell, it looked the same. So there's a couple of alternatives. I'm just trying to make it super easy so that anyone can make this. Um, so a base like this will help or you can get the home improvement store to cut you some one by twelves. The two by twelve is pretty expensive, but we just yeah. happen to have it. <laughs> just happen to have it from a project that didn't pan out. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. 
Step three, we're gonna drill some holes. I don't know why that's drill, that's drill. We're gonna use a one and three eighths inch Forstner bit and we're just gonna kiss the wood. We're just gonna make a little indent. So I took this paint marker, paint marker, and I drew a little line around the Forstner bit so that I'll know exactly how deep to go, ish, ish. We're just making space to insert or inset the magnets, the magnets for each of the boards that we're going to put across at each of the directional boards. <laughs> safety first. Oh, safety first. Safety first, y'all. Well, that made a mess. Yes, let's get these things. There's a ton of wood shavings everywhere. Hmm. We'll vacuum this up in a second. But <sighs> there's the holes. That's it. We just made a giant candle holder. Put yes. some tea lights in there. <laughs> Done. What do you guys think? Step four. We're gonna glue down some magnets That would stick to it. Yeah, we're gonna glue down some magnets in the little holes we just drilled out. Or do you wanna to try to separate the magnets or put glue in the holes? Do you wanna separate them? I did put the spacers back. <laughs> and that makes it easier. I didn't record any of that. What? You didn't record yourself using glue? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I don't know. I think they like to see me using glue. <laughs> Tell you what, we just squeezed it. <laughs> what? You're giving up, you're giving up the secrets. Oh, this is the one no, with no spacer. Oh man, there's no, no leverage. There you go, that helps. <laughs> I used this to help to get it back in there. Mm. What? I feel like you're just squeezing all the glue out. No, it said to clamp it for two hours, so I was just trying to make sure it was damn tight. Well, I'm not really going to clamp it for two hours. No. Alright, now okay. it's dry. Yes. Oh, sorry, babe. <laughs> Good thing you had your hat on. Yeah, you're protecting me. Step four. <laughs> now we're going to paint. <laughs> We're gonna use this great country chic paint. It goes on with one coat, and that's why it's great. That, that and they got a lot of colors. A lot of these great farmhouse colors, which is perfect for this fall directional sign that we're gonna use, we're gonna make here. So I'm gonna start by painting these pickets, each in fall colors. So uh, let me tell you what we're using. Hollow, Hollow Hill. With a twist. Dark roast. Cheesecake. And fresh mustard. Ooh. Fresh mustard and cheesecake. And then we're going to stencil our design on top once these dry. So let's start with painting the pickets. We'll flip the colors around. All right. Step five. Now we're gonna add the designs. We just have some words and some graphics to put on here. So Garrett created this stencil for us. It says bonfire, hay rides, corn maze, apple cider, and pumpkin patch. And I'm going to go ahead 
because this Aura Mask 813 has this grid on the back, I can see through. And I'm going to go ahead and slice this up and we'll cut it so that one fits on each board and we'll add the stencils to each of these boards. <laughs> The one I was just flashing actually has a little mistake on it. Somebody didn't peel it correctly. <laughs> so I had to create another one. All right, now let me decide. Now let me decide. I want green. I want them pretty much in reverse order, I think. Do we like that? Or do these go this way? No, no. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. And... Oh, I have them backwards now. This has got to go this way. This has got to go this way and that way. And that way. All right, bonfire goes on what color? Orange, maybe? Mm -hmm. It's going to get, I kind of thought it through. That's going to get a green, green paint. Green Will paint. that work? Let's see, I guess we can decide. Which one's getting orange paint? Hay rides, orange letters, cream. Corn maize would get the orange letters, apple cider. Oh, you want, no, I guess pumpkin patch. We want pumpkin patch up here on the green one, don't we? Bonfire will go in the brown, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Uh, huh. Hmm. Huh. Does it really matter which way they're pointing? Do I really need the arrows? So our stencil has the arrows, but we've made the pickets have like a built-in arrow. We can cut the arrow off and then put it inside this picket area. Yes, I say let's do that. All right. Because now I have three pointing this way and two pointing that way, and I'd rather them. Well, did you get the little scissors that you could find? I He's did. got the tiniest little scissors. <laughs> I knew it was going to be a delicate job. <laughs> I guess we're just gonna eyeball it, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. Should I put the pumpkin on the other side now? Oh, yep. Well, I guess that's a good thing about these stencils is you can cut them up like this. We had pumpkin on the right, but now we're gonna put pumpkin on the left. So here we already have the transfer tape on our uh, stencil. And now I'm going to peel off this backing with the uh, grid marks on it. The white paper backing? Yep. Lay it face down and give it a tight pull back. Keep it tight against the, the transfer, the 831. Just the stencil material. Yeah, just do a tight roll against the stencil material. Oh, look at that like the perfect place for that. Yeah, the center of his A is in a knot, a knot in the wood. It's not in a good place. It's not. It's, it is it's not. not. So do you think this should be down here like this? I will like try to center it in the picket. All right, so the stencil's down. Yep. It's best to use something to make sure it's down real tight to this wood. We didn't do much sanding to this thing. None. And now you're going to peel your transfer tape up. That's the clear tape on top if we can get to it. Cause <laughs> and again, nice tight pull, keeping it like all the way back like 180 degrees. It starts to lift up, go in reverse, press it back down, and continue on. Try to pull the transfer tape in a different direction, see if it'll stay. Best to keep your fingers as close to the, the pull spot as much as you can, because if you get way back here, you start pulling up on the stencil, and you don't want to do that. Now, I have a couple of options here before I actually paint my stencil. Oh, are you going to apply all the stencils? Can I start painting? Yeah, right. You can either, because this is a painted surface and not a stained surface, you can put either put a coat of the base paint right over top of the stencil to help seal it so it doesn't bleed, or you can add a coat of Mod Podge. So since I have this wet brush here, I think I'm just going to add a coat of the base paint. Base paint. 
Base paint. Base paint. So another good technique while you're painting is to dab. Don't swipe the paint because that kind of pushes it under the stencil. The best way to do it is just a dab straight up and down with, we use these um, sponge brushes, brushes often and uh, they really help you dab on the paint when you're using a stencil. You see I'm using this heat gun to get these to dry a little bit faster, but you have to be very careful with these stencils. They do not like the heat, so I make sure I keep it moving the whole time. So when you peel off your stencils, the tip we have here is peel against the grain, not with the grain, because if you can, with the grain will kind of pull the grain up. So you want to go across the grain and you do not have to wait for this paint to dry completely. It's actually better if you pull it up just a little bit wet, but be careful that you don't get your fingers in the paint and, and on touch your board. It again. Yeah. Yeah. Step six. Now we're gonna glue the washers down to the little signs that we made. I didn't paint my bags yet. We're gonna use a Gorilla Glue, the clear Gorilla Glue. All right, let's go put these somewhere to dry. Step seven, and now we're gonna paint our post and all the pieces to the post. Post and post pieces. We're just gonna paint it white. Everything's going with this coat of white. What color is it? Cylindrical. Crinoline. Crinoline. I think it was something to see. Okay, we have this wood post base trim, which we're gonna use to put around the bottom of this thing. So I'm gonna paint it. These were like $4 or something, but it's already, it's already cut perfectly. Trim, that's the way I like it. You glue it in around. Step eight, and now we're gonna assemble it. First, we're gonna put some pilot holes with a countersink in the bottom. I'm using some three inch screws, four of them, put them in the bottom. Now I have these little scraps, these little square scraps from a picket. We're just gonna glue them Put them in the corners. Now we're just going to tag it with an inch and a quarter brad. The nail, not the guy. It's been so long. It's been, we missed you, Brad. All right, let's flip this puppy over. Mm. Uh. Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> All right, it's a little too tall. A little too tall in here. Put it on the stool. Oh yeah, stool is a good idea. Ugh. Well, you didn't put your base cap on. Are we just gonna glue it, or oh, are yeah. you gonna brad nail it? Oh, we're gonna brad nail it. <laughs> we got our base cap. All right, now I think we're done. Hold on, let's go get the sign pieces. <clears throat> All right, ready? Moment of truth. We're gonna see if our theory works and the magnets will hold these boards up. Oh yeah. I don't know, is this how they go? Yes. Yeah. That one looks like it's inset pretty far. Uh, I think it's stuck on it. Yeah, got it. Oh, 
Emily cannot see the pumpkin on top. Oh, you guys can't see the pumpkin? It's a bumpkin pumpkin. Look how cute that is. And we have a surprise for you. Yeah, I'm gonna move the camera so they can see the whole thing. Okay. All right, I'm back with some Halloween ones. So we'll take off the fall. Halloween. Isn't that great? Alright, wait. Hold on. Wait, we're not done. Hello Christmas. Look at that. Interchangeable. The magnets worked. Guys. Yes. Ah, yeah. I love it. It's exactly what I was envisioning in my head. So good job. And they're all beautiful. I love all of them. I love that the magnets allow us to swap it out. We can make it anything we want, like porch rules. We could put the magnets closer together and make it porch rules. You could make it an Easter bunny, uh, Easter an bunny. Easter. You could do all kinds of things with it. It's late and uh, we're about out of time. So we're gonna go eat some dinner and we'll see you next week where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. Ooh, you think I can balance You think all the things will stay on it while I balance it? No, I don't. Yeah, I think so. No, it's it. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh Hold my on. gosh. It's quick wood. Oh my god, it's so heavy. Woo! 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 I'm gonna be so mad. I'm gonna be so mad. Yeah. All right, let's go eat, babe. Let's go.